Hello and welcome back to another Saving Your Disaster campaign. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing the Already Lost campaign. That's how I will title it. Already Lost because it was indeed a safe game that was already lost. Just with a little bit of tweaking we were able to buy us some time. But the safe game itself is still in desperate need of reshaping and reshaping it will get. Today it's Operation Wolf Face. Will face uh, will be a wonderful supply rate. We got an unknown enemy here, so that's most likely going to be a either a chosen, but they wouldn't show up. But it's potentially an alien ruler, so I would guess the alien queen makes a return, and uh, thirteen or twelve other enemies. But it is a non-timed mission, so we should be good to go. I'll try to put as many soldiers in there that need experience as possible and hopefully we can get quite a few rewards out of it let me just set up the team okay so this is going to be our team i would want to put a sniper in here but the only sniper that is available is still three days wounded lightly wounded if we were to put him in that'll be 12 days shaken on top of it because if you put lightly wounded uh, characters into a mission there's a really high chance that they will actually be shaken afterwards so unfortunately that'll need to wait i decided to go and level both of the templars as they will be potentially the lifeline of this run they are strong one of them has fortress the other one blade storm so we're running with two mind shields here edgar alien poe the newly found ranger major of course gets into action we gave him a hazmat vest for that sweet sweet immunity to all of the physical effects and on top of it blue screen rounds all the way through deep six will be the other blue screen rounds um, wielder in this run so both of them should deal with the technical um, or mechanical units whilst slider is going to heal and use a distraction with mimic beacon should be good to go to be honest let's see how well this is going to play out in a perfect world i would try to get kind of an almost flawless mission but if it's really the berserker queen then that might be not possible all right we landed everybody is good to go we're taking the spark with us mainly because I want to level it to a point where it can heal itself. That way the author of uh, the game will have an easier time to uh, deal with injuries going forward. Got a lot of high ground here, some of which will be use, uh, useful, some of which won't. Rolling. Let's make an aggressive push. And we're immediately seeing some of the enemies. Fantastic. I would like to go to here. Some more enemies. Okay. All right. I think what we can do is we could position all of our melee units a bit further to the front. Warden positions themselves there. Okay, fair enough. Good. Grenadier full cover into a really solid position. Slider take sort of the back line here. And of course our mech takes a high ground. Let's put her here. Or it rather. So far so good. We know that there is another pack to the right. Which is not going to spot us out yet. And we might be able to immediately engage. Potentially be two packs. Now they moved away. The other pack might not. So since they are out of line of sight, I would like to check this here. Okay, another pack that simply moved away. Oh, they moved into the backyard. Oh, all right. Fancy. Yeah, I don't want to move here because uh, the window potentially will give us away. So that's a bit of a line of sight maneuvering here. So instead of just hastily rushing in how about we're just 
going to do the calm collected maneuver which is putting everyone into a fantastic spot moving out strong defensive position for all of the excom operatives and for now we should not be afraid as soon as i get a clear engagement to one of the packs should be good to go those guys move even further away which is fantastic in an optimal case the other pack will move in which of course they won't do okay all right There is a mutant, so charging in and essentially using Bladestorm will not work because what we've learned in one of our recent campaigns is if you are concealed and you're attacking with Bladestorm, they will actually counterattack. That's a bit frustrating. It is what it is, though. What we could try to do, though, is move up and uh, freeze them and get a nice little jump on them that way all right this could be a dangerous maneuver if we're spotted out we still got enough backup yeah it's fine like i said it was uh, tricky to deal with all of the line of sight Okay, so a couple of things to begin with. Number one, Spark is moving closer. We're starting with Overdrive. Interesting, by the way, that this here is an explosive as well. It's potentially too large, so our own operative would be damaged if we were uh, going for that. Still got a teamwork, which I suppose we do not need at this point. That's a pretty solid shot, to be honest. Get some defense, get some high cover, but we do have fantastic aim are we just going to shoot him without destroying the cover possibly let's try that all right and if we can get rid of uh, sky entirely then that is easy peasy because now all that's left is to deal with the archon what are our skills? Does anybody have a shot that allows uh, them to move afterwards? Potentially not. Six damage. You know what? Why not? We do have threat assessment. Might as well use it for Edgar Alien Poe here. Eight protocol. There's no downside in using it. Ah, we don't have threat assessment yet. We only have a protocol, but that's still fine. Explosion, just to soften that guy up. Six points of damage. Fantastic. And now... Time to go in and mangle the Archon. Good. Parrying. And... I would like to take a shot here. Slashing wouldn't be bad either. We got Blade Storm, so let's move in and try that. There we go, fantastic. And that's a dead Archon. 
if we would have missed, we would have had two blade storms to deal with it. But I wanted the focus on our Templar. We're standing a bit exposed in the open. Not the end of the world because we do have parry. But gotta be mindful with that. And the fact that no Chosen is showing up tells me that we're going to fight against the alien ruler. Careful movement into full cover. Might trigger something. Luckily we don't. Which now gives us the certainty that we can move up with the remaining forces. All the way to the corner. Careful here to not like pull something up here. Want to be careful and just overwatch. We know there is a pack over here. Might as well move to that side. We want to prevent that from happening. It's also sector pod stomping around. So we've got to be careful of the sector pod as well. Let's go trigger. And it certainly does. Once again, our chief of disaster, the spark, is moving up. Can't move any of our Templars close enough, but that's okay for now. I think we're simply going to remove the cover here, to be entirely honest. Alright, so much for cover. Moving, to position. Moving into position, and that should be a kill. Of course, only and only if you're hitting. If you don't, then you're just standing there, wondering what's wrong. Alright, moving up. I don't want to charge in because uh, this here is a perfect spot where you might overextend. And although we can all agree that the Templar auto pistol is potentially the worst invention that XCOM ever had, it still is a 60% chance and it would crit. So yeah, decent damage. Not overarchingly great damage but still okay moving up and let's see if the specialist will hit yep she hits but unfortunately a dodge well that could be a mind control and it's a, it sure is she has chosen a tie or it uh, he has chosen a target that unfortunately is also not immune to mind control, so it's a bummer. Which now forces my hand and this. Oh wow, Bladestorm. Oh, Psyken, you should have thought about that. That is why you are using manual movements to prevent the enemy from, um, to prevent your own AI uh, from being incredibly stupid. There is a gatekeeper, interesting, but we haven't pulled that one yet. All right, so that was horrible. Immediate healing to remove the fire. And we're certainly going to be on parry mode. Got two enemies over here. We can, we can also deal with them. 
not the end of the uh, not the end of the world. This here should not trigger any new enemies. That's an interesting proposition, but I would much rather like to actually kill the Spectre. Thanks to blue screen rounds, that was nice, and the implacable or flackable will allow us to move a bit closer. All right, moving up. One thing that we can do is use the frost bomb just to make sure that this guy is not going to be a problem. I think not the worst idea ever. Moving over here to get a nice little flanking shot. And I think we're going to use that frost bomb. 77%. One thing that you might want to know about the frost bomb is actually increases the chance of hitting. I'm not sure if it does with flanked enemies, but it certainly does uh, with enemies in cover, because if they're frozen, they can no longer take cover. Good, now it's frozen. And yeah, it increased it as well, 87%. This here might be a bit too dangerous because of the gatekeeper. Which is also why we're just moving to here and not all the way. And we are moving up. So that we can fully engage. Yeah, with the exception of that stupid blade storm, which of course hit the one time where it needed to hit. The rest was finely played. Good, so much for him. Alright, we could launch a nice explosion kind of into the middle of these guys here. Or, alternatively, where's... Ah, we don't have capacity discharger yet, so that won't work. to here I mean if we're moving further in or definitely going to pull that other pack right this over here might be a solution because we're not triggering overwatch and we can try to hit the mech back there Try to go for it, 60% chance. Nice. Very nice shot. I'm running low on ammo. All right, moving up. Are we triggering? No, we're not. potentially will be triggering with the next uh, pull. This here could be an opener. This here would also be an interesting option. That would be six damage from the explosion, four to uh, from this explosion, four to seven, 
and the car explosion on top of it so that would be a triple explosion potentially destroying that thing let me hold back with our option here for now i would like to see if we uh, if a bit more aggressive play is going to help us this could trigger the gatekeeper for sure But we got a mimic beacon. It also gives off very strong psionic readings. And we got a lot of parrying. Alright, so what are we going to do? Let's think this one through. Moving up. Andromedon is the least of our problems. The gatekeeper, I think, can be frozen. So can the shield bearer. So let's just take both of them out of the equation for this turn. A bit of crowd controlling here. Fantastic. Still can throw a Mimic Beacon, that's even better. Good, and now... Question of the day, of course, is how do we deal with all of these... ...little buggers. This here could be a thing, unlikely to be a good option. I think we got to use the explosives. So if we were to theoretically explode something back here, that'll deal substantial damage uh, to the mutant and to the Andromedon could also try to hit both of the mutants back here wow and as always it is a pain in the rear Okay, so this here seems to be kind of the best bet. We'll explode uh, twice for the Andromedon. Might as well use it. There we go. The thing is fully shredded. And we can theoretically move up Emily here has blade storm so she is capable of defending herself let's move up and if if we were to parry that means we still would have uh, the shell the Andromedon shell as well as two mutant attacks the first one would die immediately due to uh, Blade Storm, the second one, however, would come through. So we gotta think about that before making any rash uh, decisions. Could also start to amplify damage on him, and then we're essentially trying to kill this guy it's going to be difficult
Mm, we're going to take some damage, potentially. Not 100% sure yet. Uh, mm, let me see how I can play that. So, I do. I think I do have an idea. If we're positioning ourselves like up here. That means with a Mimic Beacon, we're potentially only going to get hit once. So there's the kill that I was hoping for. She's now at maximum focus. We're going to go for a parry, and she has Bladestorm. Now, what we want to do is we want to hand over another teamwork. Can't kill the captain, not in one go. We have too little... Too little power for that but what we can do is we can move all the way up there get one focus on killing and get our second parry we already have one we do not have blade storm on this templar and let's go for the mimic beacon which should keep both the captain and one of the mutants happily engaged. Captain is engaged. There we go. Okay, fantastic. Alright, I did not calculate that the damn eye will be engaged as well. But that's okay. We're going to take one hit then. There we go, that's the parry, which is now coming into play. There's the other parry. And that's the hit that we're going to take. Unfortunately, Bladestorm is not going to kill it completely. I miscalculated. Oh well, good for us. I miscalculated just a tiny bit. But those are the slim margins from time to time between being successful and being dead. Would hit the gatekeeper. Okay, cool. Well, what I would want to do is get up here. Next turn, next turn we can fully unload. For now, what I would want to do is, uh, since we don't have we don't have a fast loader, right? Advanced magazine and scope. No, we don't. So, what I want to do is to prime this guy here, shred some armor. That's exactly what we need to do. Moving over here, I want untouchable and implaceable. How do I get that? Uh, by destroying, potentially destroying that shell, right? Right. Moving up. Let's kill the shell. With that, we got Implaceable and Untouchable, right? Yep, we got Untouchable. All right, cool. Very good. Uh, we also got Bladestorm. So might as well position ourselves here. Just a decent cover. And at the same time, an option to Bladestorm. Or alternatively, like right here. Which is also decent cover and an opportunity to Bladestorm. Like it. Okay, perfect. Now, next up. We 
we can deal with that elite officer. Moving in. And since we do have Bladestorm, that guy will die next turn, regardless of what they are doing. 66%. Problem. Oh, wait. Even less. Okay. Well, it's a good chance to hit, and we would holo target it. Which, again, we're just setting this guy up. Nice. Chainshot would have been an option, but yeah, that, is, that would have been potentially asking for a bit too much. Alright, we can, could move all the way up to here. Hit the guy. And then get, go into parry mode. We do not have Bladestorm here. We don't want to deal with that mutant. Yeah, that's at least half cover. And we're out of the thickest with Mystic. we go and another parry good we got a 55% chance to hit this guy and we got a free a protocol which I would like to put onto the spark so that no one gets any ideas of hitting it and we're going to Focus the gatekeeper. All right, miss shot is still fine. There is the blade storm I was talking about. That's one go. Nice. Foreseeable. That's one hit. And we got untouchable and quite a bit of parry going. Gateway is parryable. Interestingly enough, we took damage. I'm not 100% sure why that is the case, because we were already... We were already in parry mode, so I'm not sure why our uh, Templar again took damage there. That should technically not have happened. Alright, time for overdrive. Although it's just two shots, it is still a good overdrive. Psy Zombie, a nasty gatekeeper that we could take care of, and a mutant uh, that needs a lesson in being a bit more humble. Alright, explosion range is quite large, so we've got to be careful here. Uh, I forgot we got a reload first. Well, it's never too late to uh, change some plans. In this case, the Elite Shield Bearer could be the plan. And we'll do that in a second. We got Fortress here, so... We should not take any damage from the explosion. Fantastic. I will tear you apart. Moving up. Their armor is tough. Yep, removing the shield and parrying. Let's start to mark this guy. 
Nice little shredding. Would we be able to kill him? No, we would not. Okay. Okay. In which case... Now we would be able to kill him. Fantastic. Implaceable, untouchable, which means we're moving up here, still untouchable. And we're moving back here. And just in case, yeah, that is not necessary, just an overwatch. There is the blade storm. And there is the parry. Interestingly enough, he kind of changed mid action. And since he could no longer attack due to being burning, he decided to then take a shot. Another kill. And that should be it, right? Yeah, I figured. Wow, an interesting rumble. I like it. Pulled three packs. Still made it through. And we only had one injury. And there we go. Nice. We got a spark promotion. And that one is fantastic. Rainmaker is just so good. Bigger explosion, uh, explosion plus two damage. That is fantastic. And, oh wow, look at that. She also got Reaper. Reaper is a trap, though, on uh, on the te Templars. That looks like a fantastic ability. It is not, though, at least in my opinion, because it prevents you from uh, parrying. So I would much rather advise to go for a really solid deep focus build, Reflect, and parry. And continue with parry just single attack specifically if you have blade storm that's already a second attack right there and eventually you get quick draw because we've seen that with quick draw you can shoot once and then even attack on top of it so it increases the damage even further let's see our loot we got alloys we got crystals we got tons of supplies and a few new enemies that uh, have been that have been salvaged good beam cannon, uh, cannon is almost done and the idea now is to really stabilize what we were trying to do the entire time that is an important uh, reward but before we're going into it there is a rescue mission and given that that these are not the most exciting ones i think i'll end the episode here and we're just going to rejoin the episode at the next geoscape thank you for watching guys and see you all in the next run oh and don't forget to hit that like and um, comment button down there that would be much appreciated take care bye bye